Hi there, this is the camera I use for most of my videos. It's a Logitech C920. It allows me to shoot in HD at 30 frames per second and it works very well with Linux. The camera is already a couple of years old and there are many reviews available online, so I'm not going to add another one. Instead, this video is about modifying the C920 to accept different lenses because I felt the wide angle lens and the digital only zoom are quite a bit limiting. I found this website www.kurokeso.com selling a DIY conversion kit for the C920. Kurokeso is the brainchild of Saulius Lux and based in Lithuania. Apart from the basic camera body, there are a few options. You can either select a DIY kit and use your own C920 like I did or you can select a ready-made unit including the C920. The basic unit has a USB mini connector and if you're like me, you already have tons of spare USB leads lying around, which means you don't need to buy another one. During the conversion, you are going to remove the original lens assembly. This means you are not only losing the autofocus capability, but also the original infrared filter. Without a new filter, the colors will be off and Kurokeso offers two options. The low pass filter, which I selected, basically replaces the original filter and removes the infrared component. Or you can convert the camera to an infrared version by using the high pass filter instead. The last option is the lens cap. This option wasn't there when I bought my kit and I highly recommend getting it to protect the filter or sensor from dust if no lens is connected to the camera. To be clear, with the kit you are getting the case, a couple of screws, hex keys and a USB board. You probably need to order a filter and of course have your own Logitech C920 and some basic tools and reasonable soldiering skills. You also need at least one lens and Kurokeso offers a couple of high quality lenses on their website. The camera body has a CS mount, which is common standard for CCTV cameras, so there are plenty of lenses on the internet. You can also get a CS to C mount extension ring that opens the field of available lenses even further. Let's have a quick look at the rework instructions on the Kurokeso website. First and foremost, Saulius has done a nice YouTube video covering all the steps. However, since he has done this conversion probably a hundred times, it goes at a fairly high speed. The installation of the filter with double-sided tape is shown here in this image and the wiring diagram is shown here, which I'll cover later in more detail. There's some more basic information about dimensions and being able to get a simplified 3D model. Delivery from Lithuania to the UK took about one week. Let's see what we've got. Very well packaged, no complaints here. The two metal shells that form the enclosure and two plastic bags. This must be the bag with the filter. And this bag contains tools, screws and the USB board. A closer look on the inside of the rear shell reveals a printout showing us how to wire up the USB connector you see in the back. This is the outside of the rear shell, made in Lithuania. You don't see that very often. The front shell with a CS lens mount and two perforations for the microphones. The rear has already been machined to fit the C920 PCB and the USB connector board. 
The bag with the infrared filter contains the filter itself and a strip of double-sided tape. Ok, so here we go. The first job is to disassemble the C920 which requires to remove the rubbery pads on the left and right underside to expose the screws below. At least on mine the pads are quite firmly glued in. A good chance to stab yourself. With that pad gone, two screws are visible and have to be removed, but first the pad on the other side. The second pad finally removed. The screws are extremely hard to remove. Logitech really doesn't want people to get into the C920 it appears. I needed all kinds of tools to get them out. Well, these four are finally out, but pretty chewed up. Unfortunately, since Kurukesu's instructions are to reuse these screws later when putting the PCB into the new housing. With these screws out, the next task is to remove those plastic edge panels. Another prime opportunity to stab yourself. Oh no, now there are another four screws on each side to remove. This thing contains an amazing number of screws. Luckily these are slightly easier to remove than the first four. I can now remove the lens cover. And expose another four screws hidden inside. With all these out, the final plastic piece comes off and exposes the PCB, which, you guessed it, is held by another four screws. With these out as well, the PCB is now just held in by the USB cable. It ends in a connector, which I have just unplugged from the PCB, but the shield is actually soldered on. The easiest way to free the PCB is to just cut this last wire with snips. and the PCB finally comes out. And here's the PCB. The instructions are to remove the lens assembly which provides the autofocus. This means it needs to be soldered at these two connections here. The other job is to get rid of four SMD LEDs, two on each side, here and here. and the same on the other side. The reason the LEDs have to go is that in the new housing and with the original lens assembly gone, their light leaks into the CCD sensor. Yet the removal of the LEDs is a tricky business. The rework video on the Kurokesu side shows how to heat both ends with a large, for SMD, soldering iron tip apply extra solder and heat until both ends melt and then just brush the LED from its pad. I considered using a hot air gun but I haven't got a nozzle small enough to not damage or accidentally desolder other components close by. In the end I used the suggested soldering iron method and it worked well enough. The desoldering of the SMD LEDs is probably the hairiest part of the whole conversion and it has to be done if you plan to use the camera with a Logitech driver, for example under Microsoft Windows, because the Logitech driver automatically turns the LEDs on. If you are using Linux, for example GUVC View, you have full control and can turn the LEDs off. In that case, you might consider leaving the LEDs on the PCB. The desoldering of the lens assembly on the other hand is mandatory but fairly easy. 
Just don't forget to remove yet another screw on the back of the PCB before starting. The next job is the installation of the infrared filter, if you decide to put one in, like I did. You cut three small pieces of the provided double-sided tape, peel the cover off on one side and glue them around the sensor opening, like so. Then remove the top covers of the three pieces using tweezers to uncover their sticky sides. The filter comes with a protection foil on both sides that need to be removed first. To avoid fingerprints, hold it with tweezers and simply drop it into the sensor opening and gently tap it in place on the sticky tape pieces. The next job is to solder five thin wires onto the small board with a USB connector. These pictures are taken from the Kurokeso website. The wire length in the table is rather generous. I cut mine slightly larger and ended up with quite an excess, but it's still not a problem. The wires need to be quite thin. One way is to use the cut-off USB cable as a source. The colors are of course only a suggestion. As you can see, four wires are soldered on the corresponding holes of the PCB, but the shield wire is soldered directly onto the mounting point of the connector. Here's how the USB board looks with the wires attached. You can also see the main PCB with the LEDs removed and the CCD exposed because the lens assembly has been removed. It is best to be really careful and quick now not to scratch the CCD or have dust particles settle on it. This is how the USB board is installed into the housing and how the wires run. It is screwed in with a small screw and a long hex key both from the back that contained the USB board. Now to insert the PCB. It fits like a glove into the housing. The PCB needs to be screwed in and Kuro Kesu says to reuse the existing screws. This turned out to be problematic because many were no longer good enough to be reused. Also the screws are of different sizes and it isn't quite clear which ones one is supposed to reuse. I had trouble getting the lower right one in, even though I tried all kinds of the remaining screws. My suggestion to Kurokese is not to rely on reused screws and provide four properly sized screws new with a kit instead. In my case, although that screw isn't pretty, the PCB is secure and the back shell still fits, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Now comes the last soldering job. The five wires from the USB board need to be attached to the main PCB. This is fairly easy. The only complication is that the solder mask has to be scratched away at one place to provide a solder point for the ground wire. I used a small flat plated screwdriver for that and it was no problem. Here's the board with the wire soldered in. I cut the yellow one really too long, but I decided to leave it since it doesn't cause any trouble. Time to close it. Luckily, these screws came with a kit and fit perfectly. This blur is what you get after the first power up without a lens attached. But if I wave in front of it, at least it recognizes light and dark, so the camera still seems to work, which is quite a relief. On eBay I had found a cheap Chinese no-name zoom lens with CS mount that looked reasonable. Inevitable, the box was all squashed when it arrived, but the lens looked undamaged. I screwed the lens on while still recording, so these pictures are really the very first images of the converted C920. Of course, with the original lens assembly gone, focus is manual now, but I always had problems with the autofocus of the C920 anyway, and so generally did not use it. This is how the converted camera looks with the lens attached. Quite a beast, don't you think? A quick word about lenses in case you are as unfamiliar as I on this topic. 
So firstly, the camera uses a CS mount, which means that the focal plane is about 12.5 millimeter from the bottom of the lens. So here in a cross section, we have the camera body with a sensor and the CS lens attached. The only difference between a C and a CS lens is that the C lens is designed for a focal plane of 17.5 millimeter. There's no difference in thread or shape of the lens. So basically a camera for C lenses has a sensor 5 millimeter deeper in the camera body compared to a CS type. Since the converted C920 has a CS mount, this means if you screw a C lens into the camera, it will fit, but you only get out of focus images because the sharp image is always 5 millimeters behind the sensor. But that can be easily fixed by a 5 millimeter extension ring, which basically moves the C lens 5 millimeters further away from the sensor, and now the 17.5 millimeter focal plane is exactly where the CS sensor expects it to be. The other way around does not work. A CS lens in a C camera produces a sharp image that is always 5 millimeters in front of the sensor and obviously adding any extension will only make it worse. The second thing to look out for is the sensor format. The C920 has what is known as a 1 3rd inch sensor format. Sensor formats originated from the days when the image sensors were vacuum tubes and relate to the diameter of the tube. Having a 1 3rd inch sensor format simply means that the sensor area in the C920 is equivalent to a historical 1 3rd inch vacuum tube sensor. The sensor format is important because you don't want to use a lens that is meant for a smaller sensor format. If you do this, the lens will block some of the light reaching the sensor and cause a shadow. Getting a lens with a slightly larger format is fine because the sensor simply doesn't use all of the image projected by the lens. Lenses are characterized by their focal length in millimeter and you may be familiar with a typical 50 millimeter lens for DSLR cameras being normal, 35 millimeter wide angle and 80 millimeter a Taylor lens. Because the image sensor is so much smaller on the C920, you need to apply a multiplier the crop factor. Wikipedia states that for 1 3rd inch sensors this is about 7.2 and means a 35 mm lens on the C920 acts like a strong tailor of 250 mm. Keep that in mind when selecting your lens. The last issue is the lens quality and resolution. Quality is about the materials, design and build. Obviously, a lens where components break or wobble during use is bad quality. Resolution is related to the pixel size in the sensor. As a lens consists of a number of moving glass bodies, all with imperfections, a lens of lower resolution will blur fine details across multiple adjacent sensor pixels, thus leading to an image with reduced resolution. As you can see from the datasheet, the C920 has a true optical resolution of 3 megapixels with a pixel size of 2.2 micrometers. Ideally, a lens should be rated for at least 3 megapixels at the correct sensor format, but obviously more is better. Sadly, eBay vendors don't list megapixel ratings for their lenses, probably for a reason, so it's a bit of a gamble and quality can change overnight. Saulius mentioned that he continuously monitors the quality of the lenses offered by him and occasionally has to switch suppliers when standards drop. Here's the eBay listing of the lens you just saw. It's a zoom lens and designed for CS mount. Further below the sensor format is stated as 1 3rd inch which fits the C920 and certainly I have not noticed any shadows. The build quality isn't fantastic, the controls for zoom, aperture and focus are not the smoothest and there are some distortions, but it's at least all metal and glass, not plastic, as far as I can tell, and hey for the price, it isn't that bad. Here are some test shots with that lens. The board is a Raspberry Pi Zero standing in as a model. The background is a pattern I designed in a drawing program and printed on a laser printer. 
The small boxes are 5 mm square, the larger of course 10 mm. This was videoed from a distance of 81 cm from the lens and it covers an area of about 88 by 50 mm. This is about the maximum zoom in you can get with that lens. The same target but at a wider angle. Now the lens is 50 cm away and the viewable area has expanded to almost 195 by 110 mm. On the lower part of the pictures a tripod is blocking part of the pattern. The widest possible angle. The lens is still 50 cm away and the viewable area is about 430 by 240 mm clearly showing the tripod legs. I got another lens from eBay. This one is a C-mount lens and the brand is Fujian which had had some good reviews especially on build and optical quality. This is a fixed 35mm lens, no zoom and comes with two macro extension rings and a mount for micro four thirds cameras. The fact that it is for a larger camera with a two third inch sensor format made me hope the quality would be better and indeed this lens is miles above the previous one in build quality. The controls are smooth and I did not see any obvious distortions. This is a C-mount lens and it needs an extension ring to work on the converted C920. It turned out that the two macro rings that came with this camera are in fact extension rings so you don't need to buy anything extra. I did not know that and so I got a separate extension ring. This is the eBay listing of the one I bought. On the plus side, having a separate extension ring, I can still use both macro rings that came with the 35mm lens to extend its range to pretty spectacular magnifications as you shall see. This is a wide view using the 35mm lens. The distance is 170cm away and the viewable area is 160 by 90 mm this is about the widest area you can practically get with this lens unless you mount the camera on the ceiling and have the target on the floor. This lens is clearly of better quality as far as resolution and distortions go. To zoom with this lens you move the camera closer. This is at a distance of 83cm and the viewable area is now 115 by 65mm. Again, moving the camera closer to 46 cm from the target, the viewable area is now 65 by 38 mm. This is the maximum zoom possible with the lens at a comfortable 38 cm away from the target and a viewable area of just 50 by 28 mm. With this lens and at that distance, you can use the C920 as a PCB microscope for SMD soldering or inspection. But it gets better, let's add the two macro extension rings. This is the same target with both macro rings fitted. The distance to the target is still a respectable 11.5 cm, which is just about ok for doing soldering or rework, and the viewable area is 15 by 8 mm. Here's a quick magnified tour of the Raspberry Pi Zero. Overall, I'm very happy with how the conversion turned out and I would recommend this to anybody who wants to use the C920 for more advanced videos and who has reasonable soldering skills. Don't do this if you rely on autofocus because you will lose that capability. The image quality depends on the lens or the lenses you buy. I hope I have given you some pointers in that respect. If you want to play it safe, get them from Koro Keso together with a conversion kit. After I finished my conversion I emailed Solius with a few suggestions. I wasn't too happy with the need to reuse self-tapping screws scavenged from taking the original Logitech housing apart, although admittingly there are tons of them. The problem I had was that by the time they were out many of the screws were all chewed up. Also it appears that some of the screws were too long for the new housing and they would not go in all the way. My suggestion to Solius was to include four new machine screws for mounting the PCB with a kit. Solius agreed with my complaint and said if there was demand for the kit 
he would make a new revision and include machine screws in the kit for the same price. My other suggestion was to include a lens cap for the camera body when no lens is mounted. Sarius agreed and promised to make it an option. You saw earlier he already did and the website now includes an option to get a lens cap and I really recommend doing so. You will see the converted C920 and lenses in action in my future videos or rather you will see through them instead. I'll try to use the better 35mm lens as often as possible but some footage will have to use the no-name zoom lens. I promise that I will eventually replace it with something better when I can afford it. If you liked the video please give it a thumbs up, leave comments and thanks for watching.